Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video about how to find the average rate of change of exponential functions. All right, so for the first few pages, you're gonna uh, stay with me and take some notes, and then there'll be some problems for you to try, and then at the end, you can see how you did. All right, so the term average rate of change is, should not be new to you. Okay, take a look at, at this first page, okay? And let's just review uh, how to find the average rate of change of a linear function. Okay, so let's start down here in the middle. All right, so remember, rate of change is a fancy word for slope. All right, and you should know already that to find the slope of a line, it's the change in the rise over the change in the run. All right, and if an equation is written in slope intercept form, you know that the m value, right, right here, is the slope. And say if you only have two points, okay, you can use this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 uh, minus x1 to get the slope, okay? So the slope of this graph right here, I'm gonna go from this green dot, which is now red, to this green dot. So it looks like the rise is gonna be one and two, and then the run is gonna be one, two, three, four, and five. So the slope of this graph is gonna be two-fifths, okay? And a really important part of this is knowing that the rate of change of this graph is gonna be constantly two-fifths. So if I go up two over five, I'll be on the graph. Up two over five, I'll be on the graph. It's always gonna be like a staircase where it doesn't change, all right? Now, an exponential function is quite different than a linear function because our graph is no longer just a nice line, is it, okay? So the rate of change is gonna be changing throughout the graph, all right? So that's important thing to write down. So let's write that down. So the rate of change is not constant throughout the graph. rate of change is not constant throughout the graph. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's say, uh, take a look here at point A and point B, okay? The slope between here and here is gonna be roughly this line, right? Okay. But say if I wanted to see the slope between point C and point E, let me use a different color here. Okay. The slope of that would be from here, kind of like this. And notice that's much steeper than the red line. All right. So for exponential functions, the, the slope is constantly changing. All right. As you pick, progress across the graph. All right. Now I'm going to erase these and start fresh. All right, so what you got to do is you have to find the average rate of change of, of cer certain intervals, okay? So we're gonna find the average rate of change from point three to four. So point three is gonna be right here, which is letter C, okay? And the location of this one is gonna be three and eight. So three and eight. And then for four, it's gonna be location D, which is four and 16. So all I did is I just listed the location of point C and D. Okay, so we're gonna to try to find the slope of this line right here. All right, and you do use the exact same formula as if it was linear. So the change in Y over the change in X. So that's gonna give us 16 minus eight over four minus three. And that's gonna give us a rate of change of eight to one. And there it is, all right? Let's do one more. This time, let's use the same graph, but now we're gonna find the rate of change, okay, over the interval two to five, all right? So from this point right here, B, to five, which is this point here, E. So I wanna know the average rate of change of a line, kinda of like that, and draw that in, please, all right? So the location of B is two, and it looks like four. And the location of point uh, E is 5 and 32. All right, so again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that will give us 32 minus 4 over 5 minus 2, and that will give us 28 thirds. And we'll leave it like that. Okay, if you wanted to, we could get the... Um, 
unit rate, but 20 thirds is, is fine. All right. So now they understand how to find the average rate of change of exponential functions. When you pause the video, okay, and try the your turn problem now, and then when you're done, hit play. And you can see how you did. All right. Good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's say I did with this practice problem, okay? So the goal is to find the average rate of change of the function y equals two to the x plus one power or the interval negative two to two, okay? So we're gonna first fill in the input output table and then we'll actually we'll graph it too and then we'll figure out the uh, rate of change, all right? So if I replace the x with a negative two, that will give us uh, two to the negative first power, which really equals one half. Uh, if I plug in negative 1, uh, well, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and anything to the 0 power we know is, is 1. Uh, see, if x is 0, that's going to be 2 to the first power, which is just 2. Uh, this is going to make it uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, so it's going to be a 4. And then uh, 2 to the third power, if I put a 2 in there, is going to be an 8. All right. So let me graph these points. So negative 2 and a half is going to be right about there and negative one and one is right there zero and two that's going to be our y-intercept one and four is right there and two and eight will be right about there all right so let's continue the graph in both directions here All right, so there's our graph, okay? So now we wanna find the average rate of change from point negative two to two, all right? So I'm gonna use a different color here. So our negative two point is right here, and our point at two is gonna be, let's see, x is two, it's gonna be right here. So we wanna find the average rate of change of that line going through those two points, all right? So for this one, our points are gonna be negative two and one half, and also two and eight, all right? So again, we have to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that will give us an eight minus a half over two minus negative two. And see, eight minus a half is really 7.5. And two minus negative two is four, okay? If I do 7.5 divided by 4, I'm going to get the unit rate of 1.875 over 1. And there's the answer. All right, how'd you do?